morning. That's the best you can do? Good morning. So how are you guys? Everybody's feeling good this morning? Got some sunshine? It's all good. I was thinking I might do a little reader's theater this morning, but I'm looking around, and at first I was going to ask the kids to come up and read. But I'm wondering, can we get a bunch of parents to come up here, put on some costumes, and read for their kids? Yeah. What do you think, guys? Do you think we should try and beg your parents? Yeah. Is there any, are there any parents out there that want to come up and read? I need three guys and three women. Oh, come on, make your kids happy. Your mom. Here. Grandma works for me. Grandma, you are going to be Katie Kazoo. I'm thinking Pepper. I'm thinking Suzanne. You've got some beautiful jewelry. No men are willing to come up and read one. Here we go. All right. You're looking like George to me. Jeremy. And I need one more guy. Can I get one more guy? One more brave father. Come on. All right. Yeah. Because it's so much more fun to see your parents make fools out of themselves. So everybody gets to wear a sign, and then I get to run around with the microphone. All right, are we ready? Yeah. Okay. This is the true story of Katie Kazoo and how she started to switcheroo. I've got it. I've got it. The football sword right toward Katie Kazoo. She ran to the ball, reached out her hands, and oof, missed it completely. You took your eyes off it again. Katie, I can't believe you did that. You lost the game for us. Just then, George Brennan came running across the field. He had a big smile on his face. He's good. His team had just won the game thanks to Katie's fumble. Don't yell at the secret weapon. Secret weapon? Are you kidding? Uh, secret weapons help win games. Exactly. Katie's a secret weapon for our team. The kids all laughed. Katie blinked her eyes tight. She didn't want George to see her cry. Forget about George. He can't help being mean. He was just born that way. Just then, Katie's other best friend, Suzanne Locke, ran across the playground. George is just an old meanie. Let's go to the monkey bars instead. OK. Last one there's a rotten egg. Katie and Jeremy took off after Suzanne. Jeremy took the lead quickly. He was the fastest runner in the whole third grade. Katie hurried to catch up to him. She turned her head slightly just to make sure Suzanne was still behind her. And then, splat! Katie stepped right in a mud puddle. Oh no, what a mess. Katie wasn't kidding, she was a mess. There was mud all over her favorite jeans. Now, if this had been first grade, Katie could have changed into the clean clothes in her cubby. But Katie was in third grade now, and nobody in third grade kept a change of clothes at school. Katie was going to have to wear mud-stained clothes for the rest of the day. Hey, look, everyone. There's a mud monster on the playground. Growl. George stuck his arm straight out and walked around the yard, pretending to be Frankenstein's monster. Katie wanted to cry. This was the worst recess ever. It was so bad that Katie was actually glad when their teacher, Mrs. Dirkman, blew her whistle and made everyone go back to class because even doing schoolwork would be better than this. At least that's what Katie thought. But when Mrs. Dirkman called on her to go to the head of the class and answer a math problem, a terrible thing happened. Katie opened her mouth to explain what she was doing, but words didn't come out. Instead, belch. It was the loudest burp Katie had ever heard. A real record breaker. Man, Katie's stinking up the whole classroom. Hey, you know something? When you burp, it sounds like a kazoo. A kazoo that sort of sounds like a, like Karoo. Maybe we should call you Katie Kazoo. Katie Kazoo. Katie Kazoo. Katie Kazoo. Katie Kazoo, I see you. Pee you. George teased Katie all afternoon. 
She was so upset that she ran all the way home after school without waiting for anyone else. And when she got to her house, Katie was glad that her chocolate and white cocker spaniel Pepper was waiting for her on the front steps of her house. She reached over and gave him a hug. Thanks, Pepper. At least someone isn't making fun of me today. Woof, woof. <laughs> you are such a special dog. Sometimes I think you're even smarter than people. You're nicer than people anyway, especially George Brennan. <laughs> but even Pepper couldn't cheer Katie up completely. She was still sad that night after dinner. As she and Pepper stared out into the night sky, she thought about all the rotten things that had happened that day, like missing the football and losing the big game and jumping in the mud and ruining her favorite jeans and burping in front of everyone. Worst of all, she was thinking about what George was going to say to her tomorrow. Would he call her a mud monster again? Would he call her Katie Kazoo? Whatever it was, it wasn't going to be good. Katie frowned. I wish I could be anyone but me. A shooting star shot across the night sky when Katie made that wish. And everyone knows when you wish on a shooting star, your wish comes true. That one little wish changed Katie's life forever. Now she always seems to be turning into someone else. Sooner or later, the magic wind comes and switcheroo, she's Jeremy. Who, me? No way. A girl can't be me. Wanna bet? Or Suzanne. That could never happen. I dress so much nicer than Katie does. <laughs> oh, Suzanne, you brag so much. Or Speedy, the class hamster. That hamster once wound up inside my sneaker. That wasn't Speedy, it was me. And boy, did his shoe stink. Katie has even switched a route into her own dog. <laughs> In fact, you never know who Katie will turn into next. Be careful, because it's just possible that sometime, switcheroo, Katie Kazoo is you! Let's hear it for your parents, you guys. They were awesome. And you know what? Whenever anybody helps me with a show, I give them a George Brown Class Clown sticker, and I really think your parents deserve them, don't you? And maybe if you're real good, they'll give them to you. <laughs> sure. So that's Katie Kazoo. Katie Kazoo is the very first series that I ever wrote for Penguin Books. And then I did a series called George Brown. How many of you have read a George Brown book? George Brown and his magical super burps? Well, I've got a very special surprise for you guys. I have a brand new series. It's not even in stores yet. In fact, no one in the whole world has heard this book yet. It's a new series, and it's called Magic Bone. And this isn't even really the book. This is just a fake copy of it that they used to sell to bookstores. So you guys are getting a look at something that no one has ever seen. In fact, I probably could get in a lot of trouble for reading it to you right now. But what do you think? Do you want to hear a little bit of Magic Bone? Yeah. Do you want to be the very first people? Now that doesn't sound very convincing. Do you want to be the very first people to hear Magic Bone? Yeah! Well, I was already the first person. Yes, you saw it. All right. So this is Magic Bone. And the title of this one is Be Careful What You Sniff For. Here we go. Never before. Chapter one. Wiggle, waggle, woo! I take a flying leap and land right on the big couch in the living room. I know I'm not supposed to go on the furniture, but I can't help it. This couch is just so soft and comfy. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. I roll onto my back and wave my paws in the air. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I flip out and squirm on the soft cushions. Hello, yard, I bark as I stand up on my back paws to look out the window. I can see my whole yard from here. Well, I could see it if my fur wasn't in my eyes. Stupid fur, always getting in my way. Scratchity, scratch, scratch, scratch. My paws scratch the fur away from my eyes. Scratchity, scratch, crash. Wiggle, waggle, yikes. My stupid paws just kick the tick-tock toy sitting on the table next to the couch on the floor. I hop down and take a look. The tick-tock toy has a big crack, and it isn't ticking, and it isn't talking anymore. Look what you did, I bark at my paws. 
Of course, my paws don't look or answer. They can't. Paws don't have eyes, and paws don't have mouths. Paws just have fur, like the fur that got in my eyes and caused this whole mess in the first place. Bump, 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 bump. Wiggle, waggle, uh-oh. That's the sound of Josh's two legs running down the stairs. Actually, he's stomping down the stairs, which means I'm in trouble. Bad dog, Josh yells. See what I mean? I don't understand a whole lot of two-leg words, but I know what bad dog means. I wriggle under the table and give Josh my best sad dog face. I'm sorry, I whimper. Josh doesn't answer. That's probably because he doesn't speak dog. My tail slips between my legs. It knows Josh is angry too, which is pretty amazing since my tail doesn't have ears to hear Josh yelling or eyes to see his angry face. Sparky, Josh says to me, shaking his head. His mouth keeps on moving, and I can hear sounds coming out of his mouth. Wah, 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 wah. But I can only understand my name, Sparky. I know he isn't too angry because now he's smiling. And that's something that dogs and two legs do to be friendly. I guess it's OK to crawl out from under the table now. Josh kneels down to scratch me between the ears. I love when Josh scratches me. I think he must be the best two-leg scratcher in the whole world. A little to the left, I bark as I cock my head to the side. My tail pops out from between my legs and starts wagging wildly. Crash! Wiggle waggle, yikes, there goes the tall skinny water bowl Josh keeps on the table. I don't know how you're supposed to drink from the water bowl. You can't really get the water out even if you stick your tongue all the way in. I know I've tried. Josh must think it's a weird water bowl, too, because he never drinks from it. He just uses it to hold flowers. Well, he used to use it to hold flowers. Now it's in pieces, and the flowers are all over the floor. Water is everywhere. Sparky, Josh shouts. I turn around and bark at my rear end. Stupid tail, why did you hit the water bowl? I reach my head around and try to grab my tail with my teeth. My tail tucks itself between my legs again. I reach back farther. My tail tucks itself tighter. I reach, it tucks, I reach, it tucks. My tail and I are running around and around in circles. <laughs> Josh grumbles. He grabs my collar and leads me to the backyard. When he growls like that, Josh almost always sounds like he's talking dog. I can tell he's saying I have to stay outside while he cleans up my mess, because I'm pretty smart for a little puppy. After he cleans up, Josh will probably get in his big machine with the four round paws. Then he'll drive away for the whole day. But that's okay because now my tail and I can play, play, play. And there's nothing I like to do more. I race out into the yard. I have big plans today. I'm going to dig the biggest hole any dog has ever dug. Diggity dig, dig, dig. The mud under my paws is cold and wet. Dirt flies everywhere. Hey, Sparky! I hear Frankie, the German shepherd who lives next door, barking at me through the fence. You better cut it out. Your two leg isn't going to like a big hole in his lawn. Josh won't care, I answer. He only gets mad when I make a mess inside the house. That's what you think, Frankie warns. I'm telling you, one too many holes in the lawn and you're going to the pound, kid. I've seen it happen a million times. I'm going to the what, I ask him. The pound, Frankie answers with a laugh that sounds more like a growl. You know, that place where they keep the dogs nobody wants? You don't want to go there, trust me. The dogs stay in big cages with bars on the walls, and they don't let them run or dig. Never, I ask nervously. Not ever, Frankie answers. Thumpity, thump, thump, thump. My heart's beating really, really hard now, and my tail is hiding between my legs again. Uh-oh, I have that feeling, that tingling feeling. And that means one thing, I got to go. I run over to the big tree near my fence and I lift my leg. Sometimes I pee when I get scared. And I'm scared now, so I pee. Don't frighten the pup, Frankie, Samson, an old mixed breed who lives behind Josh and me, growls. Frankie starts to say something else, but he shuts his snout. When Samson talks, dogs listen. Even a German shepherd as mean as Frankie. Samson smiles at me through the fence. You're not going anywhere, he promises. Your two leg loves you. I can tell. I believe Samson. He's been around a long time, and he knows all about two legs. If he says Josh loves me, it's true. Meow. I look up and spot Queenie, the neighborhood cat. 
She's sitting on top of the fence. Hiss. Queenie gives me a smug cat smile and starts licking herself. Cats are lucky. They don't have to take baths. They can clean themselves. Still, she doesn't have to be such a show off. I'll show her something dogs can do that cats would never try. I, run I race over to the bright yellow ball in the middle of my lawn. I grab the ball with my teeth and I spit it across the yard. Then I cho chose the ball all the way to the fence. Woohoo! I'm playing fetch with myself. My tail perks up and wags really, really hard. Queenie licks her paws and yawns. <sighs> I scoop that ball up in my mouth and I spit it out even further this time. Ooh yeah, I'm the king of fetch. I'll get you, I bark to the ball. My paws start running. Fast, faster, fastest. I'm heading right for the ball. Queenie jumps off the fence and lands in my yard. She takes one look at me and starts to run. Yes, forget about fetch. Queenie wants to play tag. I'm it, I tell her. Queenie's a fast runner, but I'm fast too. I chase her through the daffodils and across the pansies. I almost catch her at the rose bushes, but she turns around and heads to my house. I'm going to tag you, I bark excitedly. Meow. Queenie says, here I come, I bark back. I'm right behind. But Queenie scampers up a tree. I look up and try to find her. My fur falls back in my eyes. Bonk. That hurt, I whimper. Meow. I roll over, and there's Queenie high in the tree laughing at me. It's not nice to laugh when someone's hurt. I don't want to play with Queenie anymore. I'd much rather dig. Diggity dig, dig, dig. Mmm, what's that smell? Beef? Chicken? Sausage? No, it's a bone. A bone that smells like all my favorite meats all rolled into one. I sneak my snout in the hole and get a closer sniff. All I want is to take a bite of this super smelly meaty bone. Chomp! Wiggle waggle woo. Suddenly, I feel dizzy. Like my insides are spinning all around, but my outsides are standing still. Stars are twinkling in front of my eyes, even though it's daytime. And all around me, I smell food. Fried chicken, salmon, roast beef. But there isn't any food in sight. Kaboom! What was that? Kaboom! If I were inside, I'd run and hide under Josh's bed. But there's no bed in our yard. And no Josh to keep me safe. This is wiggle waggle weird. Kaboom! And scary. The kabooming stops. Just like that, the loud, scary sound is gone. Slowly, I look around. Uh-oh, the big tree near the fence is gone, too. Wait a minute, the whole fence is gone. And where's my house? It's all gone. My heart starts to thump, but he thump, thump, thump. My tail hides itself between my legs. I put my new bone down on the ground and open my mouth and yelp, where am I? The two legs on the street look down and quickly move away from me. I don't blame them. I can bark pretty loud when I'm scared. I raise my leg and a puddle of pee forms under me. How dare you? Who said that? It didn't sound like Frankie or Samson. I spin around, and behind me is a small corgi walking with her two leg. The corgi's eyes are open wide and her tail is down. Such behavior is inexcusable in front of the queen's house, the corgi says, wrinkling her lip. I had to go, I tell her, and when you gotta go, you gotta go. That is absolutely disrespectful, the corgi says. Every dog in London knows not to do that. Not every dog. I didn't know. In fact, I didn't even know I was in London. Not that I know where London is or how I got here. And that's just the beginning of the magic bone. So you guys were the very, very first. Now I have one more favor to ask of you. You guys know I write a book about George Brown and that he has a magical super burp, right? Well, I got to tell you, you guys look like a pretty burping crowd to me. And I was thinking, if you guys could give me one loud burp on the count of three, I would feel like I was right at home. So can you do that for me? Can you give me one big burp? You ready? One, two, three! All right, that was pretty impressive, I have to say. Now I have another question. How many of you write stories in school? So does that mean we're all authors in this room? That's pretty cool. I was thinking as long as I'm an author and you're authors, if you guys had any questions for me, now would be the time to ask them. Does anyone have a question for me? Yes. 
How many books have I written? I've written more than 200 books. There are 47 books in the Katie Kazoo series alone. Who else has a question? Any questions? Any questions back there? I can't see. Yes, right here. Oh, how do I come up with my ideas? Well, I'll tell you, ideas can come from anywhere. If you guys were there last night, you know that Katie Kazoo came to me in a dream. It did. I had a dream about a girl who turned into a hamster and got stuck in a shoe. Now, I don't know what that says about me. But I do know that that's where the idea for Katie Kazoo came around. And the idea for George Brown, the boy who burps, that came from my son, Ian, who can burp the alphabet. And Sparky, the troublemaking puppy, you can, wow. The troublemaking puppy came from my dog, Josie, who, since we've gotten her, has managed to chew up two rugs and destroy a leather couch. So I figured, I gotta pay for that new couch somehow, right? <laughs> yes? Oh, if you don't know what to do next. Well, I'll tell you, I usually start writing books by writing an outline. How many of you in school have been told you have to write an outline, which means tell what's going to be in the beginning, the middle, and the end of what you write? Yeah, I do that too. So basically, when I start to write, I already have the whole book laid out, and I just have to write from that. Sometimes when I have trouble getting ideas, you know what I do? I go to the gym and I work out and I clear my head and I take a break. Because you know sometimes when you have a lot of homework and you do, say, just you do your math and then you take a break and give your brain a break and then you do your reading, right? It's the same thing with writing. Sometimes you just have to take a break and let your brain rest. Who else has a question for me? Any more questions? Yeah? Did you forget? Yes? You don't have to write any books to be an author. You can write a story for school. Being an author just means that you have something you want to say that you want other people to know, and you write it down. So I guarantee if you're writing in school, you're already an author. Yes? How do you make books? Well, I always start with an outline, and I write the stories. But that's an author's job. And then there's somebody who draws the pictures. Does anyone know what that's called? What's it called? The, an illustrator. And he draws the pictures. And then the books go to a big factory. It's kind of like your printer, on, you know, your printer on your computer at home? But the printer is a big, big, big one in a factory. And it prints out copy after copy after copy after copy of the drawings and the words. And then it goes to stores. Does that make sense to you? Good. Any more questions? Anybody else? Who's got a question? Nobody else? Yeah? No? But I like your mustache. That's pretty cool. All right, let me ask you guys a question. If you, think, if you could turn into other people the way Katie Kazoo does in her books, who would you turn into? Anybody got an idea for me? Yeah. you turn into George Brown. Yes. Well, that's your foot. Yes. Oh, you'd be who you are. That's really cool. If you're happy being who you are, you're my kind of kid. Yes. You turn into your pet mouse. That would be kind of fun, right? You could crawl in and out of walls and see what's behind the walls in a house. That'd be kind of cool. Yes. You turn into your cat. What's your cat's name? Dory. You'd eat her? Oh. <laughs> You'd eat the mouse. You guys have a whole dual writing thing here going. You could be partners. Yes. You turn into your dad. That's awful nice. Yes? You would turn into your cat. A lot of cats here. A lot of cat people. Yes. My dad, he's so deep, so strong. Your dad is so strong? I thought you'd turn into a shark because you're halfway there. Your dad's muscles are like that. Dad works out, huh? Or a shark or a dad. Yeah? 
a dragon, because he's wearing a dragon costume. There you go. So I see a little ladybug thing happen in there, though. Yeah. Your pet hamster. Well, Katie's turned into a hamster, right, in that first book, where she crawled into George's shoe and scared him half to death, right? Yeah. Your pet rabbit, Vanilla. That's a great name for a rabbit. Is your rabbit white? Is it a white rabbit? Do you want to know a little secret? You know, my last name is Krulik. In Polish, that means white rabbit. How cool is that? Yeah. How did you come up with it? You put ketchup on your beans. Well, that's pretty cool. It's good? Ketchup on your beans. I'll have to remember that, I think. Yes? You'd like to turn into yourself? I like these kids who want to be themselves. I think that's awesome. Yeah. You'd be yourself also? Well, that's good. I'd probably be myself too. Sometimes, once in a while, Katie, visits, Katie has, turns into an author who visits with kids. Where do you think I got that idea from, huh? From me. Anyway, you guys, you have been awesome. And I'm going to be signing books a little later across the street. So will you all come by and say hi? Thank you so much. You've been so kind.